Hey folks, uh, this is uh, Get Us Ready for our upcoming test in IM1, Integrated Math 1, on modules um, 11 and 12. 13 is saved for IM2, so when you see 13 uh, on the back of your textbook, we're not doing that. All right, so this looks just like your test if you go to our school. So review for the Unit 5 test on modules 11 and 12, so solve using the substitution method. Okay, now it also says right after that on your test that if you don't use the substitution method you won't get credit on this you have to use the substitution method okay so this one is set up for the substitution method so what we're going to do is substitute in uh, uh, this y that's 2x plus 7, well, I'll highlight that in dark red right there. So we'll substitute it in for the y in the top equation, okay? So there it is right there. We just put that in for y, and now we can combine those like terms. 3x plus 2x gets us 5x, and so um, then we subtract the 7 on both sides. Sorry, I went too fast. So there's the 5x right there. Now we subtract off that 7, and negative 3 minus 7 is negative 10. Okay, and 5 goes into negative 10, negative 2 times. Okay, remember these are ordered pairs, so we substitute in negative 2 back into the y equals equation. So I'll put negative 2 in right there, and 2 times negative 2 is negative 4, and negative 4 plus 7 is 3. So our ordered pair is always x comma y, so it's going to be negative 2 comma 3. All right, okay, so here's the next one here. Okay, now... Again, you guys, if you solve this, the elimination method, uh, you won't get credit on this. You need to solve this for um, for one of the variables, x or y, and, uh, and then substitute it into the other equation. So the easiest variable to solve for is this y right here, but it's a negative y. So I think what I'm going to do first is add uh, y to both sides, okay? So this negative y, we just did plus y plus y on both sides, and we get y plus 2, and then now we'll subtract off 2 on both sides, and we get y equals 2x minus 2. Okay, so there's our y equals. So now we can substitute that in for that y right there. Okay, so we get, uh, we put in the y 2x minus 2, and now we're going to distribute that 3 through. And then we'll combine those like terms. 6x plus 6x is 12x. And now we're going to go plus 6. And so 18 plus 6 is 24. So 12 goes into 24 two times. All right. And then so let's get y. So we'll put it back right there. So we'll plug in 2. So 2 times 2 is 4. 4 minus 2 is 2. So our ordered pair is going to be 2 comma 2 right there. Okay. And then you're going to have some solving using the elimination method. So sometimes you, I like to make them opposite signs and then add them together. Some teachers like to subtract the equations, but uh, I like to just make them opposite signs. Like this one's already set up to have opposite signs. We have a plus y and a minus y. So we can go ahead and add these together, okay? So some, some teachers call this the addition subtraction method, uh, but we're eliminating one of the variables. So I'm going to eliminate the, the plus y and minus y, and we get uh, 2x plus x is 3x. 6 plus negative 3 is 3, so 3 goes into 3 one time, and then substitute x equals 1 into any equation. I like that top one because we can avoid the negative sign. So now we'll just subtract 2 from both sides, and so uh, y equals 4. So our order pair is always x comma y. Okay, all right, this one here. Okay, so here we don't have opposites yet. So what we're going to do is multiply that that top equation by by negative four or four. Sorry. So what happens is is it gives me a plus four x that'll cancel out with the minus four x, but also the plus four y will cancel out with the minus four y. And so when we add those equations together, we get zero equals twelve. Well, when all the x's are gone and all the y's are gone and we run into a contradiction like this, because 0 doesn't equal 12, 0 equals 0, or 12 equals 12. So we just say it's no solution. 0 does not equal 12. Okay, if we ran into, all that means is they're parallel lines. They don't intersect when we, when we solve these by the graphing method. Okay, so, um, uh, and then... If we had 12 equals 12, or 0 equals 0, or 18 equals 18, whatever, then that just means it's one one ant, uh, line is right on top of another. It's the same line basically. So there's infinitely many solutions. Okay, that sideways eight is our is our math symbol for infinite. Okay, 
All right, so let's do this one here. So we can make these both um, 15x and 15x, or 36y and 36y. I forgot what I did. Uh, I made them both 15, okay? So so I made it negative 15 on the top one by multiplying it by negative 3 and make um, a positive 15 on the bottom one by multiplying it by 5. But everything gets multiplied in that equation. So there's our equation. Everything times negative 3, and then the bottom one, everything times 5. And then now we can add those equations together, and then um, uh, the 90 and negative 90 are 0, and we get negative 57y equals 0, so y equals 0. Okay, so substitute that into any equation. I'll substitute it into the top one. So um, we get uh, 5x equals negative 30, so x equals negative 6. So there's our answer, negative 6 comma 0. Okay? All right, so here we go. We have a couple of application problems that look just like this. It's just they're different numbers, okay? So Math Tutoring A uh, has a $75 enrollment fee and costs $10 a month. So we're going to do Y equals MX plus B. So $10 a month is our M. So it's going to be 10X and then 10X plus 75. Math Tutoring B has no enrollment fee and costs $25 a month. So that's just Y equals 25X. So write a system of equations. There they are right there. And then since, uh, so how many months will the tutoring centers cost the same? Okay, so Y is our, is our cost. So we're going to make them the same, make them equal to each other. So uh, 10X plus 75 equals that 25X. And then Subtract 10x from both sides, we get 15x, and 15 goes into 75, 5. So 5 months are going to cost the same. And what's the cost going to be? Just plug in x equals 5 into any one of those equations. I chose the bottom one, but we'll get the same answer if we put it in the top one. 25 times 5 is $125. That's when they'll cost the same. And then company um, A starts becoming cheaper if you're going to be in there after 5 months because it's only $10 a month after that. Okay, so a family goes on a pizza dinner uh, where three adults and two kids pay uh, 32 bucks. A second family goes with two adults and four kids paying 28 bucks. Okay, so write a system of equations that represent this. Okay, so I'm going to do, um, I think, X and Y. X are the adults and, and Y are the kids. So here's um, uh, three adults, two kids. We don't know what the price is yet, so X is the price for the adults and Y is the price for kids. And then here's we got two adults and then four kids equals $28 right there. So there's our system of equations. And now find the cost of one adult. So we can make these both 6x and negative 6x or uh, negative 4y and positive 4y. I think I'm just going to do that because I only have to change one of the equations right there. So multiply that top equation by negative 2. And then we can slide the other one over and add them together. And we get... Um, Negative 6 plus 2 is negative 4. Negative 4x equals a negative 36. And 4 times uh, 9 is, is 36. So a negative divided by a negative gets us a positive. x equals 9. Okay, so uh, finding the cost of one adult and one kid. Well, if x equals 9, that's how much an adult costs. So let's go ahead and plug in 9 right there. Okay, so uh, I'll plug it into any one. You can plug it into that one. So 2 times 9 plus 4y, and then so we get, it's 18. So we subtract 18, and we get $10, or not $10. We get 4y equals 10. So when we 4 goes into 10, 2.5 times. Okay, so now this is money. So what's the cost of one kid and one adult? Well, one kid is $9, and one, uh, I'm sorry, one adult is $9. And then the, the, the children are two fifty dollars each, okay? All right, so 2.5 is 250. All right, so sketch the graph of the linear inequality. Okay, so this is where we graph a line and then shade it. And since it has an equals bar on it, we're going to graph a solid line. If it was just greater than, it would be it would be a dotted line. So let's graph the plus 3 first. There's that plus 3 right there. And then we use the slope, negative 2, uh, which is negative 2 over 1, which means from this red point, go down 2 to the right 1. And we get that point right there, and then a solid line, remember? And then we test, is 0, 0? Does it satisfy the equation? So we're going to shade one side or the other. So to put 0, 0 in for x and y, is 0 greater than or equal to 0 plus 3? Is 0 greater than 3? No. Uh, so we don't shade the side that 0, 0 is on. We're going to shade this side over here. So there we go. We're going to shade that side. All right. Okay, let's try this one. Okay, this one is going to be a dotted line. Okay, and this one's in standard form, so what I like to do is do the intercept method and let x be 0 and then let y be 0 and solve for 
the variable. So when x is 0, pretend like that's an equal sign instead of a less than sign. When x is 0, the 3x goes away and we have negative 5y equals 15, so y equals negative 3. So we'll graph 0, negative 3 down on the y-axis right here. And then when y equals 0, the negative 5y goes away and 3 goes into 15 5 times. So we'll graph 5, 0. So there they are. Remember it's a dotted line. And then test 0, 0 to see what side. So is uh, 0 minus 0 less than 15? Yes. So we shade the side that 0, 0 is on. Okay. All right, uh, a couple more here. Okay, so this one says sketch the graph of each linear, um, I'm sorry, the graph of each linear inequality. This, okay, these are systems of linear inequalities. They should be a word system of linear inequalities. So this should be uh, section F, sorry. So I'll have this change for my kiddos right there. This should say graph the system of linear inequalities. Okay, sketch the graph of the system of linear inequalities. of linear inequality, something like that, okay? All right, so let me go ahead and grab that, and we'll just copy and paste it on here, okay? All right, so let's graph, um, uh, okay, now there's a, the, the y-intercept on this one, you have one just like this on your test, you guys, is zero, so it's going through zero, zero, so we can't test zero, zero, so we'll test something else, okay? This one's going through three, okay? So let's go ahead and graph those guys right there. Okay, and then uh, I'm just copying and pasting so it'll be there. Okay, now we're going to use the slopes. Okay, so the slope of this one is negative two-thirds, so down two to the right three. And then the slope of this one is uh, three-fifths, so up three over five. Okay, so here we went, uh, so from the, the, the red point, we went uh, down two to the right three, so down two to the right three, and the blue point, we went up three to the right five, okay? So the red line is gonna be dotted, and the blue line is gonna be solid right there, okay? So there we go, and then test zero, zero. Now we can't test zero, zero on the blue line because the blue line goes through zero, zero. So test something easy like uh, one, one, okay? So let's test uh, zero, zero for the top one, and 1, 1 for the bottom one, okay, is 0 less than 0 plus 3, that's a yes, so we're going to shade the side that 0, 0 is on, on the red line, and then 1, 1, if you look at 1, 1, 1, 1 is above the blue line, is 1 greater than or equal to 3 fifths times 1, those are both yes, so that means we're going to shade uh, above the blue line, below the red line, so where they, I just put arrows on them, you guys, so it doesn't get too messy. So it's going to be shaded in between the two right there, okay? You'll have one more that looks just like this. Y less than or equal to 4. That is a horizontal line. If it was X less than or equal to 4, that would be a vertical line. Okay, so just graph a horizontal line at Y equals 4. And then do the intercept method for that one. So, so there's Y equals 4 and less than is below. Whoops, I did it Y equals 3. Let's just change that to a 3. That way, I don't have to change the graph when I change that to a 3. All right, so you guys get to see my mistakes I do in class all the time. Okay, anyway, so y equals 2, two, two 3, sorry. Okay, and then, um, uh, so it's going to be below that line right there. And then uh, let's do the intercept method. So when x equals 0, y equals 6. And when y equals 0, x equals 3, because 2 goes into 6 three times, okay? So, um, and then so we tested 0 plus 0 is not greater than 6. So I'm going to shade to the right of the blue line and below the red line. So it's going to be in that little piece of pie right there, okay? All right, you guys, I hope you do well on your test and take care.